The other day, my daughter came home from school and she was really upset. There was a kid in her class making fun of her, telling her she didn't know anything about Pokemon. And now, while I would never condone violence per se, I am not above teaching my daughter how to destroy other children in a Pokemon battle. So naturally, I created a Pokemon flashcard deck with ChatGPT to teach her all of the type matchups and current meta, according to Smogon University, so that she could utterly destroy those children. But I wanted to make these flashcards a little bit more engaging. I wanted to feel like you were playing Pokemon when you were doing these flashcards. Anki uses HTML and CSS to style flashcards, giving you a ton of control over the layout and the design. HTML structures your content and CSS styles it, allowing you to create visually appealing and dynamic flashcards. Now, I don't know CSS or HTML, so I use ChatGPT to design the whole card and put it all together. And while this may be a simple example, I'm gonna show you the minimum amount of information you need to know to be able to start doing this on your own and building your own custom beautiful note types. Let's first take a look at how we create a new card template and get familiar with the fields that we'll be using. Navigate to the Tools tab, click on Manage Note Types. Here's a list of all your note types. You can modify an existing template or create a new one by selecting Add and choosing a new type. Once you have your template, just highlight it and then click on the Cards button on the right side of the menu. This is where you'll find the fields for the front and back template, where you put your HTML, and the Styling field, where you put all of your CSS. Basically, this is where we're going to cast all of our mysterious computer spells that ChatGPT is going to give us. The next bit of key information you need to know is how to locate your collection.media folder within the Anki app. For Windows, it's as simple as navigating to your file manager and typing in percent app data percent forward slash Anki2. Then you click on your profile and you should see your collection.media folder. For Mac users, open Google and search why did I do this to myself? And then navigate to your library slash application support slash Anki2. The library is hidden by default because you can't be trusted, but it can be revealed in the finder by holding down the option key while clicking on the go menu. All of this nonsense can be found in the Anki manual, which you can find a link to in the description. This folder contains all of the media associated with all of your flashcards. It's also where we'll store any of the media we want to use in our new custom note template to spice up our flashcards. Prepare the custom fonts and any images that you want to use and get them ready to put into the folder. A key piece of information here that you must not screw up or you're gonna spend the next several hours banging your head against the wall wondering what's going wrong you have to place an underscore at the beginning of your file name. This prevents Anki from deleting any media that's not directly associated with a flashcard during its media checks. Make sure to write down the exact file name of any media you plan on using. The names you give to ChatGPT need to match these files exactly. And then at this point, you can just drag these files into your media folder and you're ready to get started. I used the Press Start 2P font from Google Fonts. It had kind of a Pokemon feel to it. I also downloaded some Pokemon sprites and battle landscapes from a totally legitimate and legal source. Now you're ready to open up a chat with ChatGPT and explain to it exactly what your vision is for your card template. If you're interested, I provided a link to an example prompt in the video description that should serve as a starting point. It's by no means comprehensive and does not represent the entire scope of what's possible with ChatGPT when creating custom note types, but it should serve as a starting point and give you a clear, organized way to present this information to the chatbot. It's definitely gonna take some back and forth with the chatbot to be able to get it looking exactly like you imagined, but that's all part of the fun. If you get really good at communicating and directing ChatGPT, you're gonna be able to make a lot more interesting stuff. When you're ready, start pasting the code into the appropriate fields and see if it works like it should. If it's not, troubleshoot with ChatGPT to figure out what might be going wrong. It rarely works on the first try, but it doesn't usually take that long to figure out what's going wrong and fix it. Another cool thing about this is that Anki also supports JavaScript. So in addition to HTML and CSS, you can also code scripts to have it do more advanced things. Each Anki flashcard is basically like a miniature website. So anything that you've seen on a website, you can technically do within an Anki flashcard. So if you can dream it, you can do it. Let me walk that back a little bit. If you can explain it well enough to a robot, you might be able to do it. This design is inspired from Shamim Ahmed from medshamim.com. Shamim, if you're out there, shout out to you. Your note type was my favorite and my go-to during med school. I owe you so much. This is also how I wrote the script for my cubing generator. The only scripts that I know how to write are for hypertension and genital rashes, which is still important, but less helpful in this context. 
In the description, there's a link to a written tutorial of all the steps that I went through to create this note type. There's also the HTML and CSS for this note type that I created, as well as the beautiful note type inspired by Med Shamim, which you are welcome to take and change to your liking. In my next video, I'm gonna teach you the minimum knowledge necessary to start writing your own Anki add-ons in Python, which is gonna be so dope.